An invasive species can be defined as one that has been transported into a novel environment, establishes a breeding population, and then causes ecological and or economic harm in that new area. Many invasive species are intentionally or unknowingly transported by humans with devastating consequences for the environment and the outdoor activities we enjoy. European or common frogbit is native to Europe and Asia. In 1932, this invasive species was intentionally introduced as an ornamental water garden plant to the arboretum of the Central Experimental Farm in Ottawa, Canada. Shortly thereafter, the plant spread along the St. Lawrence River and into tributaries. The first record of frogbit in the United States was in 1974 in northern New York State. Frogbit probably came into the United States from Canada via boats and boat trailers. The species can currently be found in Washington State, Michigan, New York, and Vermont. Frogbit has the potential to become a serious problem in aquatic systems because it can dominate wetlands or water bodies within five years of establishment. New York State is in a position to slow the spread of European frogbit before it overwhelms area waterways. Early detection and removal limits plant growth and allows native aquatic plants to regenerate. The best management effort for controlling the spread of frogbit across New York in the east is prevention. The species can be found in shallow water of rivers, lakes, and streams preferentially preferring areas with little to no wave action. Frogbit floats freely in the water column, meaning that its roots are not attached to the sediment. Roots are numerous and are typically 12 inches long. Leaves of European frogbit are heart-shaped, 1 to 2 inches in width, and are distinctly spongy, dark purple or red on the underside. The flowers of frogbit are white, 1.5 centimeters wide with 3 petals. Frogbit rarely produces seeds, instead spreads through vegetative reproduction. The plant can regenerate each spring when dormant plant buds float to the surface and grow rapidly into tangled mats. The plant produces horizontal runners that create new individuals. Frogbit also spreads through the improper disposal by water gardeners, clinging to watercraft, trailers, and equipment. It also spreads naturally when plant pieces break off and float with the, with the current. So why is frogbit bad? Because it forms dense mats, frogbit can limit nutrients, dissolve gases, and light to native organisms in the water and soil below. When frogbit dies in the fall each year, a large amount of decomposing plant material accumulates in water bodies, causing dissolved oxygen levels to decrease drastically. Low water oxygen levels can cause fish kills and other aquatic organism die-offs. The overall result is a decline in native aquatic plant species diversity in areas where European frogbit has invaded and reducing the recreational value of a water body. So how does this invasive plant affect you? Frogbit creates dense mats that limit nutrients and light to other aquatic vegetation. Mats can interfere with swimming, boating, fishing, and waterfowl hunting. Frogbit can limit the movement of waterfowl by directly decreasing the amount of open surface water, while also limiting boat travel. Displacement of native vegetation reduces aquatic plant, fish, and wildlife diversity, with negative effects on the rest of the food chain. What can you do? You are the area experts, finding hidden pockets of New York and other locations that are ideal habitat for frogbit. We rely on you to help us monitor the spread of this invasive plant. Frogbit has the potential to not only destroy waterfowl and fish habitat, but also make boating impossible. If you see frogbit while hunting, boating, or fishing, please contact the New York Department of Conservation or appropriate organization if you are on public lands. These simple actions are the best insurance for stopping the spread of this invasive in New York and throughout the Northeast. Some other preventative measures that you can do to help prevent the further spread of frogbit. Number one, drain bilge water, live wells, bait buckets, and other water from your boat before leaving the boat ramp. Do not move live bait or bait bucket water from water body to water body. Number two, inspect your boat carefully at the boat launch. Remove all plant or animal material and dispose of the material in an appropriate container. Do the same for any clothing worn in the water, such as waders, float coats, and life jackets. Number three, flush all fishing and hunting equipment with hot water to remove biological contaminants. This includes nets, downriggers, planer boards, decoys, and paddles. It is very important that the wash water from this treatment does not drain into other uninfested waterways or storm sewers that may lead to uninfested waters. Number four, water gardeners should isolate their gardens from runoff that may lead to waterways or storm sewers. Number five, minimize the use of ornamental and non-native plant species in your water garden. Contact your local regional office, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, to determine what plants are native and not native. Finally, 
Dispose of unwanted plants in the garbage only after thoroughly drying them. Do not dispose of plants in yards, fields, or waterways. With your help and taking an active role in the prevention of European frogbit, you can ensure your future enjoyment of waterfowl hunting and boating while conserving critical habitat for native species.